It was Sunday night for you, early morning Monday for me, and I get a message from E in the morning, and you know I usually wake up for prayers in the morning, so I wake up and I just you know check my phone, and I couldn't sleep after that because uh, it was. I'm I'm not like you know we've talked about this a lot. Obviously, rumors yeah. have been you know going for some time, and we were really hoping that you know there'd be a last minute decision to kind of still kind of you know turn something around. None of that happened. Uh, we had a statement from LG. I'll, I'll read a little bit of a snippet for those listening. So the press release is uh, LG to close mobile phone business worldwide. LG's strategic decision to exit the incredibly competitive mobile phone sector will enable the company to focus resources in growth areas such as electric vehicle components, connected devices, smart homes, robotics, artificial intelligence, and business to business solutions as well as platforms and services, right? And uh, I'm, I'm gonna leave this up there. I mean, it's obviously articles are everywhere else. The wind down of the mobile phone business is expected to be completed by July 31st, although inventory of some existing models may still be available after that. I mean, it was inevitable. We've talked about this a lot. Um, it, it was. It seemed like it was going to happen. I think we were just kind of holding on to hopes. Um, after you sent me that article, I mean, uh, the the press, uh, you know, official release that we got emailed, um, I started looking back at some LG videos, some some you know LG G3, the LG G4, and the LG G4 London event was actually the first event I went to, so it kind of brought back a lot of memories, and I I made this small. Um, short, uh, just like for Instagram and uh, YouTube shorts, just kind of looking back at some of um, the LG moments, and it was it was quite emotional. Yeah, I mean, it it, it was a bit emotional. Um, I think one of the things that to me just shocked me is that it happened, and it happened really quick. We talked mm. about it last week, and I felt like maybe in the middle of the week they'll drop it, like on a Wednesday. Sunday night, they were like, "We're done with this." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, Let's get it, get uh, it out. <laughs> and and you know, when I looked at the press release again, I realized that on a business side of things, they were correct mm -hmm. with with yep. the decision. Um, but I think there's a slight business aspect of it that they weren't correct. So they mentioned one thing that was really key uh, that I totally forgot about, which was batteries for electric vehicles. And LG is one of the largest producers of batteries. For electric vehicles, LG and uh, I think Panasonic, you find you should be able to find their batteries in Teslas. So that's a really huge growth market that that the, that it's a good shift as opposed to the smartphone market, which is very mature and now is shrinking down in a sense. Mm. Um, but you know we've gone in we've gone up in nausea about how they could have fixed things, things could have been changed, and all and all that stuff. I think at least for me, I've been reflecting on the cool things that LG has done. There were so many mistakes, but there were, there were really things that I'm gonna miss. One of the biggest things for me is they were the last company to truly keep on the headphone jack and have a quad mm. DAC. And mm. um, some somebody asked a question, I think it was painfully on his text on Twitter, it's like, now that LG is gone, what do you think is gonna be missing from the space? And I said, good audio. Now, a lot of people won't, won't realize that until Bluetooth 6 or 7 gets to the point where audio now becomes, you know, wireless audio matches wired audio. And everybody was going to go, wow, that sounded great. And we were like, yeah, we had this years ago. <laughs> <Time of day. laughs> yeah, I mean, for you being somebody that's obviously, um, you know, an audio guy, uh, obviously that's something that's uh, quite close. But I think just generally, I think LG did, did have some, especially towards the beginning. I mean, I was... <laughs> I had so many LG devices that I use like on on a on a daily basis. But one of the things I also want to address is because uh, we've been getting a lot of criticism because after I posted that ah, video, yes. and a lot of us a lot of us were posting, you know, just uh, you know, kind of our farewells to LG, and then people were like, "Oh, you're just being, you know, a hypocrite." It's you tech reviewers are the reason why LG went down, and I was like, really. And it just, it, it did work me up a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, obviously people say stuff online all the time, but that particularly did work me up because I was kind of like, you know, I was rooting for LG throughout the time, right? I wanted to cover LG devices as much as possible. I was emailing nonstop asking them, hey, can I please get hold of your device? Because 
it's released in the US and it's gonna be coming to the UK in two months time. So if I go out and spend my own money two months later, it's gonna be too late. Nobody's gonna be wanting, yeah. wanting to watch the video. It's not gonna make sense. I generally, we generally have like three or four new smartphones or new pieces of tech in at any one time. Obviously we have to prioritize. We have to work you know, on what's going to, what's going to run our business for us. Right. And yep. if, if, if you're not being provided the devices and I mean like the V series, the V30, the v, I wanted to cover those devices, but they weren't available in the UK. So the only way I'd be able to get them was to actually pay a lot of money, get them imported. And again, I would get those late. So, you know, for those of you who are complaining and saying, uh, we what the reason for it, then firstly, I just want to say screw you guys because you're completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think you need to understand the bigger picture. It's, it's, it's easy enough to just kind of sit there and just kind of throw these accusations. But like we genuinely loved LG products and we were feeding back and you know, we really wanted to cover them. But you know, obviously it's all done now, it's gone. But I just wanted to kind of emphasize that you know, you can just look back at some of those clips where I'm like praising, I mean, the ultra wide camera, you know, I, I just, every time I have it in camera comparison, I'm like, boom, look at that. This is amazing. Everybody should do this. Guess what? Everybody did do it, but. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I, you're, you're definitely right. I think one of the things that a lot of people miss is, again, look, um, honestly, human, human, human perception of history is very short-sighted. It's always been the short interim. It's never long-term. You know, we've discussed about this, and I remember even on Monday I said, LG died after the G5 for me. And not mm. because I didn't like it, but because I, that's when they started making issues after issues, mistakes after mistakes that just didn't, didn't change. You know, I remember the, the very first, uh, the V10 was a device people were like, it's kind of off, but the V20 was really solid. And then they just kind of devolved back. They didn't look at certain things. And I just wanted to bring this point out because I brought it up yesterday on, um, on uh, Andrew and John Retchinger's uh, podcast. But I thought it was really important for people to realize this. I went for the uh, press event for the V60 last year, um, the press briefing. And with the, in the briefing, um, they said, oh, look, you know, we've got the dual screen um, uh, case and really put a bigger emphasis on gaming where you can map your controls and all that stuff. I was like, yeah, I remember that. That's pretty cool. I'm like, so I just asked a simple question. I said, since that's the case, does this new case or do you have a separate case that has trigger buttons on the case? Mm. Because, you know, the games you mentioned, you, you're you talking about PUBG, you're talking about Call of Duty Mobile, having that trigger takes everything to a whole new level, especially played on a mobile phone. And they said, ah, no, we weren't really thinking about that and we didn't think that uh, consumers would want that. And somebody else said, hey, you know, you could just remap that button to a camera button, right? Like that's, as long as it's a, it's a button on the case, we can map it to do other things. Hmm. And they said, well, we weren't really thinking about that. And I'm going, this is, this is a company that says they talk to gamers about gaming features and didn't think about the things necessary. That's where I got annoyed with LG that they weren't taking focus to move forward. And I think that's the problem they faced besides the other hmm. things like marketing and the rest of them. So it's quite a bit. Yeah. But I mean, the, 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 I mean they, they've gone now, but I mean, LG is not going anywhere as a company. Obviously, we still have lots of great LG devices, products. Um, they, they're pretty much in every home. So we will be seeing a lot more of LG. I hope you enjoyed that clip. If you want to hear the full podcast episode, then that will be linked down below. And if you want to see more clips like this, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss them. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super Saf Speaks. I'll see you next time.